Hello, everybody. If it's Wednesday, then it's Warhammer, even when it's only noon Eastern. Hey, that's right. We're here with an early show. It's going to be a short show, even with Tyler. Uh, mm. I promise it's going to happen. Uh, what's going on, Tyler? How you doing, buddy? It's weird. There's a light coming in. It's not dark. You can kind of see me. Uh, it's, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah, we normally, we normally, you know, Warhammer Weekly is oftentimes, we, we live in the night, in the darkness, and every so often we we come up here and yes we have to uh, we we join the we join the, the daytime we <laughs> we gotta put a put a screen up up there uh, but today we're gonna talk about the battle scroll uh, and stuff like that but of course first uh, let's get into the news so what do we got ma'am the news the world class segment we've been doing forever everybody's favorites we we clearly enjoy it we're not we're not tired of this segment at all rumor mm-hmm. engine. Nope. Uh, we always have great things, interesting things to say about the rumor engine photos. Yep. It's uh, a stick with a rock. <laughs> yep. I think it's Excellent. upside down. I'll say that. Uh, okay. Uh, somebody was like, why does Vince talk about the rumor engine? He clearly hates them all. Hey, look, listen, <laughs> person who was speaking truth. Okay. Um, the issue is they keep making crappy rumor engines. I don't know what Ooh. to tell you. So, like, make one that's actually somewhat guessable and not garbage, and that's fine. This one is, like, kind of interesting, I guess, because it's clearly, so, like, uh, 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 sort of... I think, by the way, this is definitely an AOS thing, and specifically, yeah. I think this is going to be a Warcry or Underworlds uh, thing. That's that's my guess. I think it is a little bejangle hanging off of, like, uh, you know, a Seraphon or a Cruel Boy or a something like that. Yeah. Do you recognize the marking at all? The circle with the line? I didn't. No. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Ski VT says Vince hates everything. That's not true. I just hate most things. Just most things. There are plenty of things I do like. Just most. <laughs> but I mean, it's a big universe, you know? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's But that's, I have no other great mm-hmm. insights beyond that. Stick with rock. Love it. Well, are we good? I we're think good. we're good. Fantastic. So I see you have Battle Scroll here. That's the only other news thing. Because everything this week is 40k. So we'll right. talk about Battle Scroll in the main segment. Don't worry. We're gonna get into it. We're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna get deep amongst it. Mm-hmm. Talk about it. I do think it's a pretty exciting battle scroll. There's a lot of like actual cool quality stuff. stuff in here I'm happy to see. Yeah. Uh so uh truly better late than never, I suppose. Mm-hmm. Uh okay. So with that, uh let's just let's just get straight into pick of the week, man. We'll we'll fastest so news yeah. <laughs> ever or i mean yeah. there's just no news this week i don't know what to tell you uh, uh all right pick of the week tyler what do you want to share with everybody uh yes sir so i'm cheating on multiple levels this week uh but let's start with the terrain directory i put way too much work into this insane terrain directory uh everybody if you're interested in a train any interest in terrain please check it out uh justify the months of compilation and crap that i, <laughs> that I did on the silly directory it's a huge compilation of about well, most of the 3D printed terrain, SDLs, etc., that are out there around the world, and all of the different game app providers, organized by theme, you know, winter, greenery, desert, and so on. So hopefully it's useful. Anthony Polcastro and David Griffin are responsible for this insanity. They started the love of terrain. Um, so there you go. Did you see that? Nice. Did you at least open it for me? Uh, you are, you're my friend. you got to at least open it. Look Did I it. open the document? Yeah, I opened the yeah. document, yes. Okay, thank you. That's kind. I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> Why would I not? You sent it to me. I looked at it. <laughs> and uh, number two, War Coda Battle Reports. So this is multiple levels of cheating. Uh, we've got, you know, too many to do. I, I really appreciate the channels that are covering it. It's been amazing. Battleshock Wargaming. Ridge and Jordan had a, an incredible game on the members only with Season of War. Saga of Dice with Matias and Carson and Rob and all those guys. Uh, the Weird Cast, uh, the Austin folks, Weird Knobs, they, they did one, a live stream that was really cool. So anyway, yeah, a bunch of links we're going to have for that. And let's just remind everybody, War Coda is the oh. set of additional battle plans that Tyler worked with some others to create to supplement your battle plan needs. If you're feeling a little burnt out on the GHP battle plans, or you just want to try some new, exciting, updated versions that sometimes are paying homage 
to previous mm-hmm. uh, great battle plans from AOS history, including what I think is a fair, balanced, and genuinely fun relocation orb. I have gotten in multiple games, by the way, with Warcoda. I want you to know that, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Like, okay. honestly, it's the only battle plans I'm using right now. Uh, <laughs> all my recent AOS games have been just Warcoda games, and I really like That's, them. So, yeah, good. Um, so, at any rate, uh, you can find that. I'll link that down below as well. Uh, when you're there, hey, uh, you can download oh. Warcoda for free. There's no cost to it, of course, and get those battle plans. But, but, it's if you're going to do free. that, hey, why not throw, you know, five bucks or something in the tip jar for Tyler for all of his hard work and we're in uh, testing and refining and creating all these battle plans. You can find that linked down below. I, I had people, I had friends, you know, friends like these torture me all weekend with like, you know, uh, 20 bucks extra for a signed copy, you know, a photo. It's a little bit more on top. Uh, so, so that was fun. I, I enjoyed that. Anyway, yeah, uh, this this influencer life is, I don't know, Vince, I don't know. I don't know about this life. It's a rough life. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) Uh, Okay. So uh, for myself, my pick of the week is going to be our good friends, uh, Scott and John, uh, Miniac and Ninjon, uh, and Trapped Under Plastic. Specifically, this last episode was great because they had uh, our good buddy Jason Craze, the owner and leader and grand potentate of Monument Hobbies on there. Uh, and he's talking all about sort of his journey and making paint and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously, Monument Hobbies is somebody I've worked closely with. That's where I made my uh, made my signature set of paints with them. They're a great company, um, just incredibly supportive, incredibly community friendly, like just all around amazing, amazing people who work there. One of the reasons, one of the major ways that I decide who I want to sort of partner with and talk about stuff is when they're actually like good people. Like, I don't want to partner with a-holes. I don't care if they they have money or something. That's really not interesting to me. And mm-hmm. Jason and Jen, it's basically a family. And Jordan, who's their, their painter and all of that. Basically, everybody from Monument is super awesome. And the way that they've supported the community um, is fantastic over the years. They're always ready with, like, prizes, with support, with showing up at conventions and helping people and providing paint to folks and stuff like that. So, cool. uh, and, and, and... They make all of their stuff uh, here in the U.S. Uh, so there you go. They're, they're, they they uh, they actually assemble and test yes. all their paints yep. and, and stuff like that here. Their brushes yep. are actually getting moved over here, and that will make them like the basically the only manufacturer of quality sable brushes in the United States. When once they get oh, the wow. production facilities finished uh, uh, being set up here, because they're 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 onshoring everything here. It was originally they were working with Germany, but they you know they wanted to bring everything into the states. So awesome. there you go. Um, so super cool. Uh, at any rate, uh, the uh, so check out that link down below for that Trapped Under Plastic episode. Everything we talked about is linked down in the description. So go check everybody out. Tell them we sent you. Say hi. Vin mm-hmm. sent you. Okay. So uh, with that, let's talk about some hobby time. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're moving quick. Tyler. I'm good. Are I'm we painting yet? <laughs> are, are we well, painting yeah. a model yet? When, when are when are them stormcast hitting the table? That's uh, what I want to know, know, Tyler. I know. I'm I'm still in my terrain. So uh, this is a new phase. It is it is a mo- it is quote unquote a model. It's terrain. Terrain it still counts. counts. That's fine as long it as you're counts. regularly painting terrain. That's or, that's good lead up. You just we got to eventually that. we got to eventually <laughs> take the training wheels off and go to a go to a model. <laughs> Yeah, uh, I've got to get this hobby night going again. That was the main thing, as I talked with you about, right? That yep. actually got me painting and Absolutely. Yeah, really made me feel like I was enjoying this. And so uh, I got to reach out to Jeff, uh, Cody, and some friends to get that going again. Uh, I need to do that later today and stop talking about it. So, uh, but yeah, doing a little bit of train. Played in a GT, played some games over the weekend. That was that a lot of fun. That counts. Um, thank you. Midwest Bash, GT. Uh, Laron Roberts, good friend. Uh, held uh, an awesome tournament. Wanted to uh, shout out Jake Benprop, who took best overall. Uh, we're in the Midwest. We do best overall. Sorry, everybody. It's it's still a thing. <laughs> I don't understand how everybody else doesn't. Uh-huh. Like We've talked about awards before in detail, and it's still mystifying to me that like mm. other people don't have the concept of just like best overall, best general, best general. and then like best painted and, and best sports or something to that equivalent right to like that kind yeah. of community recognition like it's such an obvious triangle to me 
And it gets rid of all the problems because, like, the general is on battle points only, the painted is on painted only, the sports is on some, or, or whatever it is, the equivalent of, like, yeah. you know, being a good a good player is, is on that only. And then you have the one who's, like, representing the pinnacle of the hobby. I don't yeah. get how it's controversial, and I don't get why everybody doesn't do it. It's so mystifying to me. Yeah. Well, uh, just like, the rest of the world way. doesn't know what we're talking about here. They're, <laughs> meanwhile, they're over here creating more and more complicated, insane ways to play Warhammer. I don't I don't know. Uh -huh. It's like, the award system seems very simple. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, so good time. Was able to have a good showing for the Legion of Night. Uh, so that was awesome. And, yeah, good time. Nice. Uh, my hobby time. Uh, I did get a game in this weekend as well. I actually played the old world. I was rolling some Bretts uh, mm. and uh, some Bretonians. We got out the for the lady. We got out the the, the noble knights, and uh, where it was glorious victory. Much honor was earned for the lady. Uh, perhaps too much of a victory, frankly. Uh, it was just pretty gross. Uh, but that was due to. to a couple things that broke my way and a couple things that definitely broke against my opponent. But it was very mm -hmm. fun. Uh, and then I'm still painting this guy, the Tomb King here. I'm working him up. Uh, all, my, all of the non-metallic metal copper is done. I really wanted to hone in on this and like work this and be mm -hmm. thoughtful about every single surface on this miniature. And he's almost done. I've got like a little bit of elements left to finish uh, in some of his jade um, sort of jewel pieces that adorn him. And then after mm -hmm. that, he will that and like the inside the inside wood of his shield, I guess. But other than that, uh, he's been a lot of fun. I really like this model. I have to say, like this guy is great. He's been super fun to paint. He's a really clean, really crisp, great model. So uh, this is the Tomb King that comes out of the like he's the new sculpt that comes out of the, right. the big box. Yep, basically, yeah. and I like him a lot. So great model. Sweet, um. So that's that's been my hobby time. Hours and hours and hours and hours and hours yeah. of doing the exact same non-metallic process over and 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 over again. Mm -hmm. uh, because that's how you get better at stuff, is you mm -hmm. just drill it until it makes you insane. Uh, so that's the plan. Well, on the on the game, I was deciding. I mean, it's good character building for your opponents. He, he needs that every <laughs> once in a while. Sure. So. <laughs> Well, well, we'll we'll play AOS or something next, and I'll get my teeth roundly right. kicked in. You know, that's that's, that's what'll true. happen. That's generally how it how it goes. I've had very good luck. I'm not going to call it anything else uh, in in the old world uh, against oh. him. And uh, in every AOS game, he where where skill can be more expressed, he uh, he generally roundly uh, puts me in the ground. So there you go. Um, okay, uh, cool. Well, with that. Tyler, hey, look at Ooh. that. Why don't we get on to the main subject, which is the battle scroll. Yes, uh, sir. Okay, so let's... Boop, there we go. Let's start at the beginning here, man. First things first, Ooh. before we get into any specificity. Uh, how'd you feel about this overall? What'd you think? Did you like it? Yeah, I did. I was glad to see they did quite a lot in this one. Uh, you already got out the the asterisk on this one that we're all familiar with. We don't have to hammer that. Uh, but I was generally a fan of this one. Uh, I mean, uh, the conspiracy continues, which really makes the puts the entire enterprise in question, Vince Venturella, mm -hmm. of a certain unit at a certain mm -hmm. point cost, uh, despite the efforts of, of some of us to correct this injustice, but you know, other than that, it's it's fine and dandy. You're right. Judicators should be 220. I think we should start advocating for that now. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. They are they you. are way too cheap at 200, Tyler. Way and I'm too, glad that you're. I'm glad you're leading this charge. It's absolutely yeah. correct, and and I stand behind your your decisions. So. Yeah. Just thinking about them the whole time against the 60 shots from the 26 inch threat range of the Reavers, three by ten Reavers. You know, at a casual what like 160. 180 points ah oh, just just made me made me feel good well they have that stormcast armor so it really helps oh you know, yeah that's, you that's, uh, points for it, tyler absolutely that four up baby that four up yeah. goes a long way it's very strong <laughs> absolutely uh no, 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 no i agree good, overall this was a very strong battle scroll lots of good changes i'm i'm, I'm actually quite pleased with uh, I, I do think there are some more opportunities with a couple things but for the most part i think this was a really really good change across the board uh, so, I mean, hey, let's just get into some specifics, shall we? Yes, sir. 
All right, so first off, we're going to just dive through this. I've got all the individual FAQs that where there was meaningful changes teed up as well. Okay. But we'll start with the Battle Scroll itself. Um, so, Core Battalion, the Wizard Finders of Antidodor. Uh, okay. We're going to try to make this not garbage. That's basically what we're doing here. Uh, add the following paragraph at the beginning of this ability. You get a 5-up spell ignore. There you go. That's I'm not going to read okay. the whole text. That's what sure. you get. <laughs> so, if you're in Wizard Finders, you get a 5-up spell ignore. Tyler, sir, yeah. are you ever putting this in a an army now? Oh, yeah. I'm interested to see if uh, often what would happen is do I have like four heroes, right? Where I've got an extra small hero, a yeah, non unique yeah. small hero that is kind of a dangler. And sure. okay, I might think about th maybe I've got a behemoth that I like to keep alive. I could throw that hero in the behemoth and then some units, you know, some elite units to give a little. The general answer is, I don't think it's going to move the needle a whole lot, but I could see it getting some play in, in some lists. Like, it's going to have some play on the margins, I think. Sure. And But yeah, it's not going to be a huge... I like that they did it. Like, it at least made, yeah. I think, for of people look at it. The the old one... Uh, AJ, no. This is just because I'm going away with my wife here this afternoon, uh, and so I wouldn't be around this evening, and the show must go on, so hence earlier time show, and Tyler was nice enough. We're doing this over our lunch break, basically, yeah. um, from our real work. Uh, so, the... Uh, my answer is it's still basically nothing. Mm -hmm. um, but I would put it exactly what you said. I think you caught it exactly. Sometimes in Skaven, I won't have six heroes. And if I have an odd yeah. number of heroes, like, and, and it's an army I don't care about drops anyways, right? Like Skaven, I'm always oh. 50 million drops. And I usually don't have, I actually just don't have enough battalions to put people in. That's what it comes down to. I like yeah. run out of them and I'm like, well, I don't know, maybe I'll just put somebody in Vanguard, I guess. Right? <laughs> I would put them in this over one of the crappy core ones in the in the core rules. So it, yep. we we beat the. It's now better than the real bad ones uh, that are in the core rules. So okay, great, good stuff. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba, battle tactics. Add the following battle tactic: drain their power. You complete this battle tactic at the end of your turn if a friendly hero with a null stone adornment is contesting an objective that was controlled by your opponent at the start of your turn. Okay, Tyler, so we're directly handing a battle tactic tied to a Null Stone adornment here yep. to basically counterbalance the fact that there that like so many of the battle tactics were tied to having a wizard, right? And I will say yep. I, fe I felt this. Uh, mm. Overall, I hate battle tactics and think they're, they're poison garbage. Really? Yes, Weird. I know. Huh. I've never talked about it on the show. This is a real okay. new thing. If people are probably hearing about this for the first time. That being said, this is a good addition to the season as a generic yes. battle tactic because many times I, I play many armies without wizards. Mm. I give them a null stone adornment because like I can and it's free and why wouldn't I if I don't have any wizards, right? Right. And so cool. I have an actual thing I can do and it's not uh, I don't have to like it's a nice mid mid to late game one I can take that I don't have to worry about, um, you know, magical dominance or something like that. Good good yeah. counterbalance to that. Yep, so. you said it all, my friends. Uh, I like that this ties also with the change to corn in terms of maybe Absolutely. actually having a no magic sign. Corn, oh. suns, iron jaws. <laughs> there are going to be three armies that all like having this this thing existing. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, good change. I mean, yes. Agreed. Battle plan, power flux, victory points, change the fourth bullet point to score one victory point if any enemy wizard hero units were destroyed in that battle round. The victory point mm -hmm. is scored at the end of the battle round instead of the end of each turn. Um, okay. Sure. I don't necessarily love this just because I hate weird off-turn <laughs> scoring and right. a thing where everything else scores at the end of your turn. But, like, all right. I sure why not? I give people more sort of time to kill wizards. Where if it happens off turn, you still get the credit. Basically, is what we're what we're yeah, doing here. Yeah, yeah. You could do some angle shooting where you could try to get your. I don't know how often this would come up, but uh, maybe look to get a wizard killed in uh, your turn, not your opponent's turn, so that you're denying them the point. Yeah, sure. I guess and now it that's would gone. be the idea. Yeah. Now that's gone. Yeah, but definitely, yeah. Yep. Uh, no, I didn't change my camera angle. 
Paul. It's the exact same camera angle it's always been. I'm just, I'm just, I'm more lit because it's daytime. <laughs> that's, that's all. No, but this is the exact same camera angle I've always had. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, yeah, cool. Good stuff. Uh, bup, bup, bup. let's keep moving. Here we go. Um, yeah, yeah, there was this little change to the, the within nine inches, right? To Malone. Yeah. Maelstrom. It used to be 12. Is that 12. right? Okay. Yeah. That's what yeah. I thought. Uh, fine. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Like, <laughs> all right. Uh, I mean, Malevolent Maelstrom, I know people kept talking it up and being like, oh, it's amazing. It's this and that. I've never not laughed at Malevolent Maelstrom and I've never been yeah. worried about it once. So. <laughs> Cool. Yeah, it's it's meaningful in certain. It has been meaningful in certain lists. The obvious list, Starborn, that has sure. you know the eighth layer of the Starborn recipe, so eighth eighth ingredient. But yeah, it's it's okay. Yep. All right, let's get into the specific Grand Alliances. So first off, in Blades of Corne, I believe that's how you pronounce that. Mm -hmm. uh, Hatred of sorcery. Add the following: Each time a friendly unit casts a spell, you must roll a dice. On a five plus, that spell is automatically unbound. Mm -hmm. Suck it, wizards. Uh, mm -hmm. So let's talk about this one for a minute, Tyler. Cause I think this yeah. is interesting. Here we have a relatively decent incentive not to take wizards in your corn. We had seen the rise mm -hmm. of people, including like the Zinch. Uh, Regiment of Renown and so on yep. to pick up early points and, and tie things up and to get Magical dom Dominance turn one and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. This definitely puts a halt on that. I am fully in 100% behind this rule. Yep. Um, I think I actually like this better than if they had just said, you can't have a wizard in your army. Which, by the way, which they could have yeah. done. Right? right? Like, you could write the rule that's just like, hatred of sorcery. You may not include any model with the wizard keyword or that is capable of casting a spell or something like that in your army, right? Yeah. Like they could have gone full prohibition. Instead, right. they made this incentive where like where the narrative fluffy players will still do this because they don't care if they have some reason they want to do it. But spiky hardcore players will would never take a wizard anymore because they're not going to risk a battle tactic on a 33% chance to fail and lose, okay. the, lose the game. That's it. Absolutely. Yep. You nailed it, my friend. Yeah, that that says it all. And and the wording of this, yeah, you know, applies to magical dominance. You know, if you, if you roll exactly. So yeah, they got the wording right. Everything's right here. Yeah, I dig it as well. Yep. Uh, David, yes, it does because allies can't benefit from allegiance abilities, but they could still be affected by them. So this is a good example of that, right? Mm. Um, where where like because it's stating any friendly unit, like it's the specifics going to outrule the, or override the general. So. Yeah. Um, and yes, I agree with so, Chuck. Hit the like button. It's free and it helps. Everybody hit like and subscribe and do fun things that make fun dings. Okay, cool. It, it also helps maintain, you know, one of the, the things that can help keep corn in check potentially is round and destroy is usually the round one play, right? Like sure. they can struggle with that round one battle tactic, whereas they were dipping into magical dominance now as an alternative, yep. which was just ridiculous. So yeah, I like that. We already talked about the no stone uh, element that they've got added as an offset to potentially losing the magic. So, yeah, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Uh, I'm not sure on that one, Arturius. I need to look into the detail there. Uh, all right. On the Maggot Kin of Nurgle, Sloppity Bile Piper. Oh, boy. Big old change mm -hmm. here. Uh, so, my love is like a ripe, ripe fart. Just, mm. Very funny. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, changed from no pile in to minus one to hit. That's it. Yep. yep. Good. Good. Great change. The ground. Yes. Yes. Bury it uh, forever. Most Nurgle players that I've heard, like, they're all on board. Yeah. I mean, dude, it was not a great, it was a terrible play experience, especially yeah. for less competitive players, uh, players who don't know about the nuances of how you can get around it a little bit with pile-in rules where you can actually pile in. You know, if you're, like, base-to-base -base touching, you can wrap and still be legal because you're not moving, uh, you're remaining as close as, essentially. Right. Right. So like there were some nuances there. A lot of people didn't know about. Yeah, it was just a, a hot mess. So big fan of this change. Yeah. Minus one to hit. Still a good, good buff. You know, it's, it's fine. Um, nothing wrong with that at all. And I mean, very punishing to like a lot of the new FEC stuff. It actually is a mm -hmm. very strong counter to them. Um, whereas the pile in often wouldn't have been because they, the way that the, many of those units would have fought, they didn't need to pile in kind of at all. 
um, to right. have a lot of efficacy, but but negative one to hit is actually incredibly strong. Um, mm-hmm. And so just because a lot of their units are on four ups, so it's it's pretty good. And it's obviously a much it's a much, much more player sort of friendly thing. It's a much less. Yeah. MPE, so, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Still good. Uh, quick shout out to our friend Dinos. He was talking in one of our threads yesterday about the Demon Prince and how it's got even more value now in Nurgle. The Demon Prince, I didn't realize can benefit. Dinos pointed out it can benefit from Sloppity's tunes. Yeah. Yeah. So it's you a demon. Have yeah, so like a Demon Prince with Malefic Talents now, 12 attacks, try to get Horfrost on him. Uh, he could be on twos and twos. Twos sure. to hit, twos plus one to wound from the, from Sloppity. So anyway, yeah, uh, he's relevant for battle tactics. Like the new battle tactic in Nurgle, he can apply on the on the Demon side, which is interesting. Sure. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's kind of fun you get to, to have his little entourage with him, right? Like, we'll, we'll yeah. talk about the Demon Prince here in a minute, and, uh, yeah. of course, as we get into it uh beasts of chaos uh i don't know why the actual header here is is magenta i don't like i guess Mm. we didn't change the name but nonetheless that's funny uh so here we see the first example of something we're going to see actually quite a bit uh which is uh increasing range to two inches so gores and zangors Mm. both going to two inches which is great uh this brings a lot of the units you would want to be on these bases up to two inch range um, existing things like Bestigors were already two inches, so that's fine. Uh, basically, you see a lot of like of the 32 mil models are, we're going to see throughout here that were problematic uh, are now on uh, two inch reach, which is mm-hmm. wonderful. Um, so, yep. yep. Cool. Good stuff. Like, obviously, it's change we've been asking for all uh, a lot. Uh, yeah. And so I'm happy to see the trigger was finally pulled on this. So. Yeah, I mean, and there's probably also something to be said about doing it selectively rather than universally, maybe in terms of trying to better maintain balance or, uh, I don't know, there's probably arguments on both sides, right, of taking just the universal approach that we had with, what, the prior season of the fighting two ranks versus being more selective about what actually benefits from this. I mean, you know, certain units are going to be able to benefit from it more than others, so maybe they yeah. thought... Let's not have everything be eligible. But no, I'm sure there I, was probably a lot of discussion around like which units are appropriate. Could we cause any problems if we make someone two inches right? And my guess is this is right. sort of the first pass at it. Uh, you know, I, who knows what it's going to look like in in four months or whatever, yeah. right? Come come new edition time. But um, yeah. you know, obviously this is a a good change now for the for the end. It, it took us a while, but we got here at the end, so that's fine. Um. Skaven, uh, their Flee Flee, which was their new battle tactic, got updated to be just two or more friendly Skaven units instead of like requiring a hero, which is good because your heroes normally weren't in combat in that way mm-hmm. and would just either like scurry away during combat, and so you couldn't, um, you might you might fail it for different reasons, or they're actually dead because mm-hmm. Skaven heroes generally get killed if they're in combat. Like there's there's lots of ways you you might not actually be able to complete this based on what happened in the previous round. Um, so this is good, good change. It's fine. It's, it's a nice layup battle tactic for Skaven. Again, I kind of hate battle tactics and I hate layup battle tactics, but I guess if you're going to yeah. give them out to everybody, I, then I want mine too. I either <laughs> want less corruption or more opportunity to participate in it. Okay. Uh, um, so if we're going to have, if everything's going to be corrupt, then I want to be part of this. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, Plague Monks are now minimum unit 20, so they can now go 20, 40, 60 instead of 10, 20, 30. Uh, mm. Good change overall. It actually makes them match the box they came in, um, yeah. which is uh, appropriate. Um, so, I figured maybe they were trying to get a little more differentiation relative to the Plague Sensor Bears that we've been seeing all over sure. the place, and sure. not, not many Plague Monks. Yeah, I mean, the real problem is just Plague Monks not taken in big units just really aren't very effective. Um, they, yeah. they need a bunch of bodies because they die so quick. Like, everything in Skaven just dies in droves if it gets touched by anything. And right. so, like, you you have to have the bodies to just absorb stuff. Yeah. Uh, to just, like, absorb the hits. Because you're, you're easily going to lose, like, 15, 18, 20 models when anything hits you in Skaven. You know, mm. I mean, it's just, it's just what happens. Um, so... Bears. First Army and Warhammer, those things happen to, to those yeah, things. Sure. Yeah, I get it. Um, I get it. Yeah, I played a game with Skaven recently, and I, 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 I went and used, like, I actually used quite a decent number of clan rats just to try to run, like, a heavy clan rat strategy, right? Um, oh. Of just, like, lots of bodies to sop up on things. And, you know, when you get them in 40 plus, 40 or more, mm. it is hard to remove the unit just because of the density of wounds. Like, 
all of those units got knocked down to, to very low numbers. But mm-hmm. because of Battleshock immunity and then them slowly, like, just constantly retreating and then building up a D3 every Battleshock, I was able to keep them, like, in the game and being functional on the table, right? Um, if I was limited to 30, they would have all been dead. So sure. I know that's yeah. Clanrot's not Plague Monks, but it's, it's it's the same point. They're basically the same unit. <laughs> so. Right. <laughs> uh okay s2d demon princes uh change the axe and sword to seven attacks and the talons to 12 attacks um yeah okay uh you know it's fine what the obvious change is to just simply make it so they get both that would have been the thing to give them back the talons and the thing but because of how it's modeled now everybody thinks that i'm guessing everybody thinks that doesn't work and um you know, that's nonsense. Nobody gives a crap about that. Uh, What is a malefic talent? It doesn't need to be the giant Foo Fighters oversized hand. Okay. Mm -hmm. It just, he has an off hand. It's got claws on it. That's a malefic talent. Right. No one knows what that is. So stop it. Just stop it. Um, But here we are. Um, This is still fine. It's better. I still don't think they're like that good on average, but it's, at the price they've currently fallen to, it's decent enough. Yeah, it's I mean, uh, as an ally especially, and again, I mean, what Dinos was pointing out in Nurgle, you know, I was thinking about, like, what other 12-inch flying meaningful hammer could you choose in Nurgle at that price range? Sure. Uh, there's not, right? I mean, you're looking at little Lord of Blights or Lord of Plagues sort of had at least been in that price range. I don't know where they stand at the moment, uh, but certainly close to 150, so... Yeah, dude. I, I'm definitely interested in trying to throw in a, a Demon Prince in my list, particularly with the change to wards and bodyguards sure. where we'll be getting into in a minute. Yeah, yeah, so, we will. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it's certainly, like, we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, yeah, that's it's fine enough. They're still not what they should be, and that's ultimately what rubs me the wrong way, right? Sure. Is it yeah, supposed yeah. to be this, like, pinnacle of uh, uh, like this, this thing you're ascending to, right? Right. <laughs> I want to do a show, Tyler, in the future about mm-hmm. tiers of heroes. Okay. Because whether intentional or not, they have created mm-hmm. five tiers of heroes. Ooh, okay. It's exciting. All right. I'm. I, that's right. We're gonna go Kingdom Order genus phylum species sort of thing, right? Like there are five tiers of heroes mm-hmm. in this game. I don't know if they think like this, but subconsciously they have built to this. And I would also allege that when something who is clearly supposed to be in a certain tier then falls out and ends up being in a different tier, that's the ones that everybody has a problem with. Okay? Okay. All right. So I'll, I'll unpack all that in a future show. Love it. Um, all right. But, like, it's it's the Demon Prince is in the wrong tier, and that's ultimately where the problem comes with him. We'll get there. Okay? That's fascinating. That creates a sort of Ludo narrative dissonance. At any rate, mm-hmm. good change. Happy to see him get better. I still played with Demon Princes, even though they were terrible. Uh, I would just like to do a victory lap here. Okay. <laughs> when Demon Princes initially came out, I directly called out that they were total garbage. They were like more than, they were 200 plus points. And on their profile, I was like, this is a garbage unit. And I had some people push back at me and be like, no, it's fine. Especially from GW who were like, no, it's fine. They're not that bad. Oh yeah. Weren't they? How's that looking now? How's your opinion looking now that they're down 50 plus points and you had to buff their attacks. Okay. Listen, when we tell you something's garbage. All right. At any rate, personal beef. Okay, cool. Disciples of Zinch. Zangor's going to two inches again, just like we already mentioned in beasts. Good stuff. Um, I hope people try Zangors. I've often thought they had a lot of potential. Yeah, definitely. But I think the one-inch reach was a killer for them. I think at a two-inch reach, they're a much more interesting unit. I think they've always been right there on the cusp, and it was literally just their reach that was stopping them. And my belief is when we had the situation where some people were, where we had easy access to, like, Battle Brothers to fighting in two ranks type of yeah. stuff, you mm. did see some people roll in some Zangors. Yeah, Juwan Noah Singh, he comes to mind with Beast of yep. Chaos. I mean, it's not Zinch, but yeah, uh, Noah ran a bunch. Uh, 100%, man. But yeah, hopefully we'll see more of them come back. Yep. The, yeah. Agreed. Um, pitch Battle Profiles Horrors of Zinch change to Battle Line if the unit contains no Blue Horrors and no Brimstone Horrors. 
If the mm. unit contains no pink horrors, change the points cost to 120. If the unit contains no pink horrors and no blue horrors, change the points cost to 80. I don't understand what they changed here. Isn't was this a points change or what? What happened here? I don't. I don't get it. I don't know what this was a changeover. Because they weren't battle line before with blues or brims, and they're still not. Uh, maybe the fact that you are allowed to take them separately now. Maybe that was it. Well, you could they're, do that before too. Oh, could you? Yeah. Mm. I, yeah, maybe some of the comments can point it it's out. just a point change okay cool that's what i thought arturius thank uh, you okay. yeah i didn't think there was a functional change here okay they just that's have it. to include it in this because it's it's weird okay i thought i was right yeah it's just just a point change mm -hmm. i assume because the points live in this weird text um forever mm. we are cursed by the silver tower silver tower was a fun board game it gave us a lot of great stuff it gave us the gaunt summoner and the whole idea of the silver towers which is all cool and, and great additions to aos lore and fun stuff Mm -hmm. Uh, but I really hate that it gave, but that is what gave us brims. That's what gave us brimstones. Okay. And in yeah. all older editions, it was just pinks split, pinks split to blues. blues and then they die. Right. <laughs> but because yeah. they needed little individual things to keep fighting, right. In silver tower. Now we have to deal with this crap because somebody made a board game nine years ago. Now we're cursed for the rest of time to deal with this garbage. Well, we're we're both big fans of the of the creator of that board game, but I mean, you can hop on Twitter and yell at him if you want to give him a hard time today. I have to no problem with the board game itself. I want to be clear. I've actually played <laughs> Silver Tower quite a lot. I actually think it's, it's a pretty a, it's fun a game. Great, yeah, it's a great game. Yeah. Um, it's just like I hate that because of that we're cursed to have to deal with it in the actual war game. It'd be <laughs> like Monopoly introduced some new rules, so now our AOS units change. Like I don't care what what is going on in the world. Like, okay, uh, now now if you go to jail, it costs you extra money or something. It's like, no, stop. stop. That shouldn't affect AOS. Okay, let's keep going. Grand Alliance order. Ooh. Vanquishers, range to two inches. There it is, Tyler. Ooh. The Stormcast Beautiful. buff I know you've been waiting for. I have, actually. Winnie and me, I mean, that was kind of rude. Emma, see, Emma, see Emma's uh, little meme that she put out? I mean, some truths just just cut deep. Yeah, basically, <laughs> two inch reach vanquishers. It was community. Nobody cares. Mm -hmm. uh, the yeah, no, I, it's meaningful. Like going that you know, particularly if you've got Vandas. Been talking about Vandas, buddy. I just wrote a list the other day. Ten vindictors, ten vanquishers, all the goodies. Stormkeep. Jared Brown, infamous for his amazing Lumineth list. He took Stormkeep to LVO. Uh, John Anderson gave him a whooping appropriately with Lumineth on stream game one, but he went 4-1 with, with Stormkeep. So, like, everything, everything's coming together, Vince, for the Absolutely. Stormkeep meta. The Here, meme I, I would have used game. is the guy with the butterfly, and it would just would have said two-inch reach vanquishers, and it would have been like, is this fixed Stormcast? That would have been my <laughs> meme, so. There you go. If I was yeah. a meme person. All right, at any rate, that's a good change. Like, it's fine. I mean, yeah. I know, um, uh, what's his name? Matt was was uh, always trying to use vanquishers, and I think he did to, to some degree. He did, but, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I, I think yeah. he's going to be happy to see this change. Definitely. All right. Yeah. Uh, Seraphon. Uh, cha change to... The, so this is the Lord of Celestial whatever resonance there mm -hmm. nonsense. Change to the first time each phase that this general either successfully casts a spell that is not unbound, successfully unbinds a spell, or successfully dispels an endless spell, you receive two cosmic power points instead of one. So, Tyler, you've you've had much more experience in getting yeah. your uh, teeth kicked in by Seraphon. What do you Enjoys. think of this change? Yeah. Good change. Uh, it's going to slow down the tempo of their uh, summoning. So, previously, you know, they could, with regularity, like, summon five wrapped on chargers. Uh, that would it's pretty, That's a pretty good unit, you know, getting those. So, that that's the main thing, is it just slows the pace down and some of these other changes... It's still, I think, going to be playable, but I doubt we're going to see it as much with uh, maybe that this ties into the Wizard Finders Battalion, given the 5-up love to more armies. So, yeah, uh, I think it was needed. Like, it, we've had a lot of conversation right around this. This is one of those yep. where it's not going 5-0 all, all over the place. Uh, the it's just a were, terrible play pattern to play it's, against. It, yeah, it's just, it's horrific. And it's not yeah. just, like... It wasn't just me, folks. Like, I mean, yeah, I had that one game where it was utter insanity. Never seen anything like it in eight years of Warhammer. 
but I, I eventually learned how to play against. There are armies that can play against in this fight. Like did okay with Legion of Night. Was, was able sure. to get a win. Like it's not impossible to beat. But anyhow, yeah, this is. This Did is you ever play change. Starcraft, Tyler? I a little bit. I almost failed high school because of of games like that, uh, and sure. so not a lot. But yeah, it's fine. That's a big Starcraft player, yeah. and you know. Uh, one of the most horrible things you could hear if you like, depending on what was going on in your situation was mm. you would hear nuclear launch detected. Right. And it'd be in like, you're, yeah. you're <laughs> and you're like hunting for that little red dot. Like, where is this happening? Yeah. Right. Where's the little dude who's got to call down the blast and so on Right. and trying to reveal him or whatnot. And, uh, you know, maybe you're Zerg, you're floating your little, your little wind bags around trying to reveal him. Mm-hmm. And uh, the Starboard playing against Starboard is like playing against somebody who gets nuclear launches like way too early in the game, just like races <laughs> yeah. to it, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, that's that's what it is. Okay, um, Kroger and Kroger Warspond. Uh, I'm so glad they changed these so I get to say that yes. word like a hundred times. So the Kroger uh, changes the wounds characteristic from four to five. Uh, big change, big change. One of the things, Tyler, about this game, mm-hmm. when they keep pinning spe- rules to specific wound values, mm-hmm. and I've talked about this on many shows, is that you end up with these very hard breakpoints where yeah. so much of a unit's value is determined by that one number, right. like regardless of anything else it says on their scroll. And right now, those breakpoints are at five wounds and at ten wounds. Wounds, yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like a nine wound hero and a ten wound hero that have the exact same war scroll. Like that are literally exactly the same otherwise, right? Except one mm-hmm. says nine and one says ten. The nine wound hero is just objectively better by a long margin than yeah. the ten wound hero. Right. Right? And it's the same for like a unit that like you take you take a unit, they're exactly the same, except one says four wounds and one says five huge difference in efficacy there not just because of the 25 percent wound buff into like theoretical durability buff right mm. but because it's now it's not three guys on an objective it's six guys on an objective if they're in a unit yeah. of three for example right yep. and this really matters a lot um like in one of our games i had pigs easily stealing objectives from trolls just as mm-hmm. an example right <laughs> sure because yeah. at equal numbers, I'm five, they're four. There you mm-hmm. go. Right? So I just walk up and can just take it from them by existing. So right. five matters a lot. Uh, good change in my estimation. Very good change. Uh, Cities of Sigmar, Alchemite, Warforger, Blazing Weapons, Melee only. That's what this matters to. Like, let's just, that's that's what it is. Yeah, yeah so I think they... <laughs> I would have, it seems weird saying this, I would have liked to have seen them drop the points a little bit on the Fusiliers. Um, I think they're like 170 right now, maybe 10 points. I'm not sure we're going to see, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, but I doubt we're going to see a whole lot of Fusiliers. Uh, this was impactful. Steam tanks, right? Steam tanks were mm-hmm. getting leverage out of this with the 3D6, especially that they could get up to um, shown by Gavin at LVO. So, yeah, I mean, this needed to happen, I think, particularly when... The Fusiliers could do Sentinels 2.0 or 3.0, or wherever the hell we were, you know, where they once per game they could do a reroll. So they were just yep. fish for sixes like old Sentinels did. So, yeah, it needed to happen. Um, but maybe they should have had some other adjustments, particularly with Fusiliers, to account for it. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm fine with them starting a little more expensive. And then if over time they could always back them down, I think it's the right way to be a little more conservative with heavy shooting. Yeah, no, I know that because you, you you were insane when it comes to this nowadays. Uh, we've got reference points, plenty of reference points. That's all right. Let's keep going. Mm-hmm. Two decaders at 220. Final sure, lesson. absolutely. Uh, Bloodthirsty Shivers going to the, the hit roll of a six goes to auto wound. Uh, so fine. I think it's a good change you, to avoid. Have you thought about the, I haven't thought about the math on this. Is it, I mean, is it a much of a difference? Seems like, I mean, maybe it might be if you're, yeah, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't thought about the math on this. It's it's maybe. a good rule. I mean, I like this rule in general, let me just say. So like yeah. um, getting back and playing some old world recently, this is effectively um, poison attacks. Okay, so like back right. in Warhammer Fantasy, there was a rule called poison attacks and it's back in the old world. And it's if you roll a six to hit, you auto wound. You skip the wound roll. Right. Mm. You still make saves and everything is normal. Right. But it just it, you bypass the wound roll. 
And it's a very potent ability. And honestly, I think that the I, I, I would like to see this kind of thing employed more. I hope going into 40, we actually use this more often than just like going straight to Mortal Wounds or something on there. Yeah, yeah. So Speeds, um, speeds things up. Yeah, seemingly? it does. It absolutely does, yes. Right. Like all these sixes are just wounds. Cool. Like, right. there you go. Like, it's 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 great. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, I, and, and uh, sharks are slightly worse damage, but mainly removes high variance. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Uh, okay, Eidolon of Mathlan, Aspect of the Sea, the Tsunami of Terror, change Tsunami of Terror uh, to uh, Casting Value of 7, range of 18, and you still get your three enemy units. Uh, sorry, and now you have three enemy units, not D3, that being the, the very relevant right. change there. Uh, um, and you minus one to save. And it has to be three different units, given things we'll see later on. Yes. Um, which is good. Uh, good change. I like this. I like that. I like have being automatically three units. I I think the Eidolons are really cool. Uh, they basically never get used, and that's unfortunate. Uh, hopefully, this will get them included in some lists. So, yeah. and I agree. Cygnus says rules that reduce rolls rather than adding more is always good in my book. Yeah, I agree. Um, Fire Slayers, Volkite Berserkers, uh, both of them getting two inch reach. That's a great change. Happy to see mm -hmm. that. I think that's a very exciting day for our Fire Slayers players. I know there's many excited Fire Slayer people out there. So cool stuff. Continuing that train, uh, by many I mean all six there. of them. Okay, well I kind of quite you, you, great masking. Like I, I thought subconsciously you were being sincere, so good work. Nope. All right. Nope. I'm not. <laughs> uh, okay, and then uh, Night Haunt, Blade Guys, Revenants, Dread Scythe, Herodons, and Glaive Wraith Stalkers all going to two inches. Very needed change. Night Haunt's in a rough place right now. This is quality. I, this is not like this alone is going to save the day, but God, does it mm -hmm. make these units actually like theoretically playable instead of just automatic trash, which is yeah. nice. So well, that's good. Well, hey, none other than Big Phil in the UK had his Night Haunt, Night Haunt out this week. So if Big Phil's playing him, something. I, right. I've seen a couple of Night Haunt lists, by the way, that are that oh. are Night Haunt lists. It's mm -hmm. Nagash. Like Manfred's <laughs> ROR and uh -huh. 200 points of Night Haunt Battle Line. Right, right. Chain Rasp or, or Blake guys, take your pick. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like, boy, oh boy, what a what a Night Haunt list you're playing there. Okay, sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, Corey Bragg says, as a Fire Slayer player, that change is dope. Very good. I'm excited. Kenny says, yay, there's a respectable 10 of us Fire Slayer players. Thank you very much. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right, Ozark Bone Reapers, no myriad. Uh, it went from a two up to a four up. That's I'll just shortcut it and say that. Yeah, it's board wide now. You're not limited to the hero. Correct, and uh, no heroes. Double yes. range. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good change. I mean, I don't think we're going to see as many no myriads. Uh, we were starting to see a fall off anyway. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's that's probably what it should have been from the from the get go. Uh, Agree. So. I like the no hero change and just at a regular four up, it's it's still yeah. doing very much its work. Anybody who's yeah. ever played like Stormcast Dragons where you have a four up, you know, it's, mm. it's very disincentivizing for people to use magic on you and you feel pretty good having it. So absolutely, 50% um, of the time it works 100% of the time. So uh, Soul Blight Gravelords, the Grasping Dead changed to pick one friendly summonable uh, unit within three inches of any enemy units. You complete this tactic if any enemy models were slain by that friendly unit this turn and that friendly unit is within three inches of any enemy units at the end of this turn. What did this change from? I don't pay any attention to yeah. sort of like battle so, tactics, so because I hate both so, battle tactics. <laughs> sure. So previously, dude, you did not have to kill a model. You just have to start the turn within three ah. and end the turn within three. So you'd have situations like like, hey, look, I've got five skeletons that are in combat. Yay. Yeah, so they're actually having played uh, far too many games than I probably should have uh, with this army the last couple of months, Legion of Night. Uh, there were all the time situations where scenarios like that would come up, right? Of uh, Yeah, so uh, it's good. It's like, it doesn't seem like much, but I, I think for a lot of lists, it is meaningful. Absolutely. They okay. still have the easiest book battle. I mean, I would yeah, put them sure. up as n number one, number two, certainly top three on the board of easiest battle tactics. Of just of getting <laughs> to 28 without an issue. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Sure. Yep. Okay. Uh, Auric Warclans, the, the important part about the change here is... No longer does Big Wa just auto get, just be the, that Big Wa fell off the number one battle tactic completer because it used to be that yes. they could just run the, the, the game, like just run right. the show by doing all of the different easy to, to slam dunk battle tactics from their individual armies yeah. that made them up. Now you right. have, you can only do the one that aligns to your general. 
fine. Good. That's how it should have always been. Like, it was silly that... I hate Big Wah. I hate soup things. Uh, I either want it to be that's the army or give me an Iron Jaws or, like, make Iron Jaws its own thing and, and that uh, and make Cruel Boys their own thing. Um, there's a third army there, but I don't remember them. I don't think they're important. Uh, so, it's fine. Um, good change. The Maw Gruntas uh, change the unstoppable momentum to only tick down at the end of the battle round instead of at the end of every turn. So, good change, not far enough. Uh, momentum is so annoying, Tyler. I played the Big Pig at Holy Wars, and there was one game, one out of five. I played this guy all the time. He only died once, where he got to six momentum. Every oh, wow. other time that he was where he wasn't at six momentum, he was at one. Period. Wow. Wow. Because it's just impossible to build momentum. Yeah. Okay. Under under yeah. the rules, this will make it slightly better, but it's still hard. Like because yeah. the only way you really build momentum is you fight low enough wound things that you can use your your monstrous action. That's it. Gotcha. Otherwise, you just tick back to one. You just sit there. You run. You go up. Turn ticks. Turn ticks. Yeah. It's just like it just goes back to one. So, um, yeah, better, still not great, but that's fine. And then big old change to Sons of Behemoth, Wrath of the Titans, Earth Shaking Roar, mm. the very garbage monstrous rampage that you have that was unique to them, uh, is now just Roar number two. Yeah. That's all it is. Like, I know it says orders, oh, yeah. but it means commands. It, they've they've already yeah. said it was a mistype yeah. or whatever so that's fine yeah. um like so now you have two roars with this this roar with a kicker uh if you happen mm. to be engaged with some small unit um this this thing as it was did basically nothing uh so you know hey i'm i'm here for it i'll take that's roar true. number two it's All great right. yeah double rories is good for sure mm -hmm. so no complaints there all right, let's talk points. Um, I mean, there's a lot here. I'm not going to go sure. through every army. Instead, what I want to focus on is, Tyler, what are the points changes that jumped out at you the most? Uh, here, this one's from Beasts to Ossiarch Bone Reapers. So, uh, okay. you know. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not looking at the stream. That's okay. Uh, I have page the, one the... of the points changes, basically. Page Okay. Well, I mean, Pendulum need to go up a little bit. It, it was all over the place. Sure. Uh, let's see. The It was nice to see some drops in cities like Talia. Hopefully Talia. That's that's a big point drop on Talia. Really excited about that. It is. Hopefully we're going we're gonna to see her on the table more now. The Yeah, so, some adjustments there. Good work, Gavin Greiger, on getting those steam tanks uh, bumped up, doing the, doing the community work there. And what else do we got? I know Chuck was excited about Marathi. Uh, you know, we just Marathi coming down back below <laughs> 700 where she should be. I do agree yeah. with that change. I think most sure. of the daughter's changes are actually pretty dead on. Yeah. I liked those a lot. Um, yeah. The Flesh Eater Quartz changes were really good as far as the big monsters. Big points movement uh, yeah, huge, on the unmounted yeah. monsters, which is, which is correct. Those things are yeah. liquid hot garbage. Okay. <laughs> And so, like, they were they were so outside the, the, the ballpark with their points. I was actually super happy to see them get adjusted. Um, so that was a very good change in my estimation. Um, I liked that a lot. Um, the ogre changes are welcome. I think the most interesting one is the Mornfang pack. As down yeah. at uh, the Mornfang pack going down to 150 is actually really interesting now for that unit. Yeah. Um, I think that might actually be worth taking a look at. I think four of those at 300 is actually pretty interesting yeah. um, as a unit. Uh, and then obviously my other big one is the Auric War Clans. All the big, all the big pigs going down. Um, right. I probably that like almost exactly the points amounts that I said they were overpriced during the show mm -hmm. when we reviewed them. So I was happy to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you know I the other stuff like our boys are probably still not down enough. Uh, you know, knockoff wish brand chaos warriors at home. I don't think are quite getting there still, but that's fine. Um, you know, goblin stuff. I was happy to see things like bounders and goblin palooza go up just slightly. I honestly think they yeah. deserved it. Yeah. Uh, and then finally on Slanesh, nice try. Keep going. Um, <laughs> sure. Like it's that army is in such a state right now. Um, it's just, it's bad. It's real bad. 
Yeah, the uh, Fire Sliders needed reductions almost across the board. I wrote a list, played a game with that army. It had felt like it was stuck in like six months ago. Like it just, it, five to 10% overpriced uh, that army. So yeah, like a list will get back maybe 5%, you know, 100 points. You'll get back some, or maybe more, but at least 100 points, I would say. Uh, Nargle got a few adjustments. Glad to see Harbinger of Decay drop a little bit. Yeah. Uh, Morbidex one, uh, I guess whatever. It yeah, just brings them all into line, which is fine. Yeah. Yeah, they're like uh, they're all see. equally worth each other. I don't. I, it's 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 fine. Yeah. Uh, OCR, couple adjustments, nothing dramatic. The Caradron. Yeah. I've heard some people argue maybe the Caradron got hit a little bit too much. I mean, they were they were doing quite well. So I mean, they're not. It's not a dramatic increase, but interesting to see. Yeah, how that impacts I, KO. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I honestly think that that's the correct adjustment for them. Like, I, I stand behind that 100%. They're a terror. They were probably the best army in the game. Um, so, like, I think they're going to be Good. okay. Yeah. Um, going down to page two here, mm. we have, uh, again, we mentioned the Seraphon adjustment. So the Star Seer, the Star Master, the Astrolith Bearer, and Lord Croak, all up points, which I'm happy about. And then, meanwhile, a lot of our more uh coalesced focused items so our steggy chief uh you know our uh saurus old blood on carnosaur and scarvet all going down in my mind these are the correct changes like we it's yeah. you got to try to punish the the starborn some while while not hurting the coalesced because it's it, if there was ever a tale of two cities it's seraphon it's you have like, like one of the strongest armies in the game and an army that's really struggling which is shocking because it has like minus one to damage as a rule and yet still here we are. Mm. And that's because so many of their, their like coalesced pieces you want to use, your big stompy monsters were overpriced. So. Yeah. I, I played against some Steggies before the, the point drop a couple of weeks ago, and I was, I was impressed. Like, yeah, I, I could see them getting the, the drops, but that, I definitely could see them being quite viable competitively. The I don't know about the Steggy Chief and where it is. I agree. He needs obviously. to keep going. Who, who said it? Artorius Rex <laughs> said, keep going on that Steg Chief. I agree. Yeah. When he came out at his points... I said that they should be brought up in the Hague for a war crime. Um, I remember, like, yeah. and I stand behind that. Yeah, uh, dude, there's something about people named Dan getting excited about pterodons and usually Ripperdactyls as well. Sure. So obviously we had the historic uh, Pterodan, you know, uh, meta for a little bit in the UK. Uh, my my good friend Dan, who we played so many games of Warhammer, he is very excited right now about pterodons, pterodans. Uh, yeah, he thinks it's just going to be the terror that's on the way. So, looking forward to that. And uh, Skaven, did we do enough on Skaven? What are your thoughts on Skaven? Uh, I'm fine with the Grace Hero and Screaming Bell change going up, as well as the yeah. Sensor Bearer change going up. That those are the only two actual adjustments up. The Plague Monks didn't actually increase. That's just to account for their doubling the the unit size. Mm -hmm. um, Plague Clot ninety is hot. Is hot like. <laughs> Uh, I've been all about them play claws recently. Let me just tell you. And at 90 points, I was a buyer at 100. At 90, yeah. I am a big buyer of this. Like, get ready for filth to rain from the skies. Um, Master yeah. Molder at 80 is great. Grace here at 110 is great. These were already strong units. The Vermin Lords are probably still overpriced for what they're doing. Um, I just yeah. like they're not 400 point monsters. They, they just don't ever make those points back. Um, mm. Rad Ogres at 130 is sexy as all get out. Like, I am here for that in a big, big, big way. Uh, Rad Ogres have and continue to be the best, probably, unit in the army, uh, other than Sensor Bearers. And yeah. so to have them have a points drop, I think, is fantastic. I mean, you're talking about a six wound model with a four up save, you know, counting on two as objectives. Your biggest problem in this army is and always has been reinforcement points, and it's utter garbage that they still have to labor under the four reinforcement point limit. Sure. Um, which yeah. is just ridiculous. So, <laughs> but you know, good changes all around. Um, so, yeah. Been seeing a lot of Nagash list with the point drops on big, big guy himself. So interesting to see how much he hits the table. To go, you know, here. I think he will get top. in there. I think there's going to be some lists. Yeah. People are going to try him, especially in Night Haunt. But we'll we'll see some more, even beyond that. Um, you know, Soul Blight. I actually like some of the changes that happen there with some of the things down, yeah. like Vordry. The, again, the unmounted Terrorgeist, things like that. Those all feel good. But Knights um, needed it. Yeah, absolutely. They, they nice 20. Anything yeah. not anything that doesn't say summonable on it is like almost instantly right. relegated to unplayable in this army right now, and it's really a problem. They they made the distinction between what is summonable and what's not way too strong. Yeah. Um and then lastly, of course, we can't leave behind without mentioning that uh, of course Alariel the Ever Queen, now at eight hundred. <laughs> I'm sure she's making every every Sylvaneth list, right, Tyler? Like she's totally playable now, really. right? 
yeah, I guess unless your name is uh, Matt Davies. Uh, yeah, he, he's been able to make her work incredibly well. And some of the people who've been using his list in the UK. But uh, yeah, I still don't see it. I, I have no clue how he was doing what he was doing with nine bows or six bows plus. However many bows, which I think have been not garbage, but you know, not the choice for a little while. And sure. yeah, uh, yeah, I don't get it. Uh, Quest for Soulsborne going down was surprising. That was a great buy at 230. Uh, Vandus, Vandus, yeah, the disrespect for that for that man uh, continues. He's, he's a big guy in the narrative, and that's that's Jesus. it. Yeah. Uh, let's just hit a couple. We're basically at our time, but I do want to hit. I need yeah. to, to to go here in just a moment, but we'll just take a couple core rules hits here, real right. quick that are of relevance. Um, the things that we need to mention are. We have a change from a previous ruling that if a thing says you can pick multiple units, can I pick the same unit multiple times? The answer is now no. So those things can't, you can't just multi-stack. If it says pick three units, can I pick the same one multiple times? Uh, you cannot, which is a great change and how it always should have worked. The previous mm -hmm. FAQ was literally insane. Uh, it's And so I'm glad to see that change. They There's a little bit of clarification. Man, man on a, what's that? Yeah, command core, like it yeah. turns that down with yeah, no, no exactly. multi stack healing and yeah. Command core and the idle and being the two biggest examples of where yeah. this occurred, but but yes. Um control of ability or control of objectives just got a little clarified on the timing. That's fine. Um does the unit have to be eligible to fight? Yes, of course. Like that's actually in the core rules. They referred you back. That was already answered. They were just pointing you there. Nice little cleanup on random move characteristic. Uh, on on how you on how random move is generated versus run rolls and they're correct you have to do it after the you you pick the unit to run which is a good cleanup yeah. um, random movement's already pretty bad so that's fine and then there we go well, that's the one I'm looking for we're scrolling all the way down to get to wards mm -hmm. the 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 big one mm -hmm. uh, some abilities allow you to roll a dice to negate a wound or mortal wound or to allocate a wound or mortal wound to a unit other than their original target. Abilities of this type are referred to as wards. So now all of your bodyguard abilities are wards, and you can never make more than one unless... Calm down, Fire Slayers players, who shouldn't have this rule, but somehow you do. Uh, unless your your specific rule says otherwise. So basically, all of our... Um, uh, all of our... Uh, bodyguards and stuff like that, as we would colloquially call them, are now... Um, uh, are now ward rules and hence negated by things that are ward rules or occasionally buffed by the things that say they can buff ward rules. Tyler, uh, let's leave on this because I think this is a big change. What uh, what do you think about this change? Uh, honest answer is I haven't thought enough about it. Uh, the yeah, I'm not honestly. I'm not sure, man. It's. Do you think it is the right cleanup on this to make yes. it to where you are able to turn off yes. yeah, bodyguards? Okay, yes. with ignoring. Okay. This is the counterplay uh, that always should have been there. And yeah. moreover, these always should have been grouped under one conceptual rules banner. I know we needed that. Yeah, so that, that resonates. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, I just had, I never really thought much about it. It, it has big implications, right? Like a lot mm -hmm. of bodyguard things are less valuable. Simple. That's what it comes down to. A lot of things mm -hmm. that shut off wards just got a lot more interesting because they have a broader oh, yeah. application. Right. And frankly, I'm here for it. I think that's the correct choice. Mm -hmm. I, like honest answer, mm -hmm. I just think it's how this always should have worked. Yes, it will have implications. Yes, some of those might be pretty rough for some individual armies. Okay, that should be dealt with, right? If if some points need to be adjusted somewhere or something like that, then that's fine. We should do that. But this is the way the rule this is a much, much, much cleaner interpretation of these rules and how they should have always worked. Period. Okay. Right on. Yeah. To me, that is worth it. The fact that we had these like different, separate but equal, ridiculously way to interpret things, we needed different rulings for all of them. Silly, silly, yeah. silly. Bring it under one banner. Everything then works cleanly, and then if we need to make adjustments from there, let's do so. Okay, yeah, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Well, there you go, folks. Quick show. Like I said, mm -hmm. thank you very much, very much, everybody. I uh, hope this was helpful for you. Battle Scrolls, good. Good stuff. Tyler, thank you for jumping on over lunch break. Uh, all of you out there, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe. Uh, if we miss anything or you want us to talk about anything, drop it down in the comments. Always read every comment. 
Uh, looking forward to the discussion down there on whether you think this was a good or a bad uh, overall battle scroll. Tell me what you think. If you want to support the show, share it. That's free. You can hit the links down below, pick up paints from Monument or whenever you're buying your hobby supplies, you can go through Amazon. doesn't cost you anything extra, but gives the show a nice kickback. There's also a merch store down there if you want to pick up Tyler on a shirt for yourself and have his cool little Sylvaneth sprite on a shirt for you. Maybe maybe get a shirt. Uh, so when you see him at Adepticon or a future event, you can walk up to Tyler and just point at the shirt and then point at him. That would be funny and cool. Uh, and of course, there's also our Patreon uh, where you can uh, focus on review and feedback and taking your next step on your hobby journey. As always, though, folks, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate it. And uh, as always, we'll see you next Wednesday. <laughs>